Thank you very much for being with us. It is a historic day today where for the first time after almost six months, the Security Council adopted a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire. And we in the Arab group, from the first day of this aggression, were united around three objectives. The first objective was an immediate ceasefire to stop the aggression against our people. Today is a significant step in that direction. The second objective was to have humanitarian assistance up to the need of our people in the Gaza Strip. I believe the ceasefire will open the door for the implementation of that second objective. And the third objective was not to allow the crime against humanity from forcefully transferring our people outside the Gaza Strip, although they have been internally forced to move from the north to the center to the south and then to other places in the Gaza Strip. A ceasefire, immediate ceasefire, would allow our people to return to the places where they were displaced from. So I am proud of the unity of the Arab group. I am proud that our representative in the Security Council is Algeria, working closely with us, reflecting the demands of the Arab group, and I think today we prevailed. Those who say that the Security Council is not enforceable or not mandatory, give us a break. We go to the General Assembly, they say it is not enforced or binding. We come to the Security Council, they tell us it's not binding. We do not buy that. Security Council resolutions are binding. And if Israel is not going to implement it, then it is the duty of the Security Council to use Chapter 7 to take measures and punitive measures in order to make them obey the resolution of the Security Council. We are not done. We salute our people in Gaza and in all of Palestine. All of our people, all of their leaders, we are one as Palestinians. We survived this ordeal. We will rebuild Gaza. We are very proud and resilient people. And thank you for covering our story during these five and a half months, and we are not done. We will go back to the Security Council tomorrow. We will ask them to defend the brave Secretary General who, have, who is with us today in refugee camps of the Palestinians in Jordan. He is the one who went to Rafah twice. He is the one who met with the leaders of Egypt, of Jordan, of Palestine, of all the Arabs, calling for a humanitarian ceasefire from early after the aggression. And he today called from Jordan, implement the Security Council resolution that was adopted just a few minutes ago. We salute him. We will defend him. We will defend the agencies of the United Nations. And we will ask the Security Council tomorrow to issue a statement or a position defending the Secretary General and the UN agencies. And we will not be done. We will continue the march. And we will start working on a draft resolution to make sure that, Ga that Rafah will not be invaded. Rafah should be protected. We should not create a horrific humanitarian situation or crimes in Rafah to push our people outside Rafah in the direction of Egypt. So we are not done. We will continue working. The unity of the Arab group is playing a tremendous role in the unity in the Security Council, especially among the 10, and we will continue working and we will keep you informed. Talal, you are first, number one. Thank you so much. Um, what's your comment and what the American Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield said, that any release, any ceasefire must be accompanied by the release of all, unconditional release of all hostages, knowing farewell by many and they argue that if all 
hostages were released, there's nothing to stop Israel from going the whole way. Well, Israel has to abide by its obligation and the charter, and it has to immediately stop the fighting. This is what the resolution called, immediate ceasefire. Any member can interpret as they wish, but the law is the law. The language of the resolution is crystal clear, an immediate ceasefire. Therefore, an immediate ceasefire has to be put in place. Also calls for unconditional immediate release of hostages. Now, the many people in the Middle East say, "What guarantees are once the hostages all hostages are released? What guarantees do we have that Israel will not go the whole way to Rafah, to more destructions? What stops Israel from doing that?" I understand the frustration of our people, and they have the right to be frustrated from the international community that dragged its feet for five and a half months before they agreed to a ceasefire. But the language of the resolution is crystal clear. Operative paragraph one starts from demanding an immediate ceasefire. The second part of the sentence, it is, it is not conditional upon the first part. It says, and also, it calls for the other part. The other part was reflected in all the resolutions in the Security Council, adopted in the Security Council, and the resolutions adopted in the 10th emergency session twice in the General Assembly. All of us are saying immediate ceasefire, and in fact, our brothers and sisters, Egypt, Qatar, are negotiating with the United States and others, and negotiating and mediating with our brothers uh, Hamas, the release of the hostages and exchange of prisoners. So that principle is not being rejected by all of us, provided that there is a release of the Palestinian detainees, especially those who are serving uh, life sentence. And I think that that will happen, and we hope that it happens very soon, and we are behind Egypt. And, uh, and Qatar, who are playing a very uh, important role in the mediation and the negotiation in order to have a deal. So that is not something that is rejected by the Arabs or by you know, those who are negotiating this uh, agreement on that deal.